As you know, web browsers treat every element as a kind of box. Everything resides inside of a rectangle of some sort. The display property in CSS determines how the rectangular box behaves. We can use the display property to alter the native behavior of elements in HTML. There are a number of display properties. For now, we'll be working with the following. Block level elements always stack on top of each other. The width is as big as they can be based on the parent element, and you can add padding margin on all four sides of a block level element. Examples of block level elements are things like divs, paragraphs, and heading elements. Inline elements don't start on a new line. They appear on the same line as the content and the elements beside them. Inline elements can't have width and height defined to them, and generally they usually reside inside of other elements. Some examples of inline elements are span, strong, and image elements. Inline block elements are kind of a mashup between both inline and block elements. They have similarities and behaviors that they borrow from both inline and block elements. With an inline block element, you can affect the height and the width of the element, but the elements will appear in an inline fashion, sitting side by side. This has a number of useful features. I'll be showing you some in just a moment. The final display property is none. This is used to actually remove an element from the page. Let's jump into our HTML so we can see how this works in practice. Here's the page that we'll be working on. This is a fairly basic HTML page. I have an H1, an H2, a paragraph, and my first paragraph contains a number of inline elements, strong, M, and A elements. Then I have a paragraph that's followed by some span elements, which are all inline elements. I have a paragraph followed by div elements, which are all block level elements. And then I have an unordered list, which has several list items. Unordered lists and list items are also block level elements. The CSS that I've made so far is also pretty basic. I'm just applying a little bit of formatting to the text. What we'll do to start off with is we're going to target all of our block level elements and apply a border to them so we can visually see them. I'll use a group selector to target these elements. Next, we'll target our inline elements. These are going to be strong, span, M, and A elements. We're going to give them a background color of yellow. If I save and we refresh in the browser, you can clearly see where all of the block level elements exist, as well as any of the inline elements. The thing that I want you to notice is the inline elements width is established by the length of the text that they contain. The block level elements are going to grow or shrink based on the width of their parent element. By default, they are going to be as wide as they possibly can be based on the parent element. Watch what happens when we target several of these elements and apply width and height to them. I'm going to go ahead and target my H2 element. We will apply a width of 300 pixels and a height of 300 pixels. I'm going to actually apply the exact same values to my strong element. So I'll just use a group selector to target both. If we save and refresh, you can see that the width of the block level element is now going to be 300 as well as the height. Our strong element ignores both the width and the height. That is because inline elements cannot use width and height by default. They will, in essence, ignore this. Watch what happens if we add some padding to these elements. I'm going to add padding of 10 pixels. And let's actually reduce the height of the elements to 200. If we refresh, you can see that now on my H2, the text has been indented from the edge, as we would expect. Our strong element, which is inline, does appear to visually respect the padding, although the padding is not creating any additional space. You can see how the background 
of the strong element is sitting over the text on the a line above it as well as going under the text on the line below it so the height of this element is not really changing although we do kind of get the appearance but it doesn't really do what we want it to do let's now get rid of this rule and let's target the div elements on our page I'm going to change the display of the div elements to inline remember the default display of the div elements is block what we'll do is we'll get rid of the h2 and the strong selectors and we'll change this to div and span I'm going to reduce the width and the height to 75 pixels and let's change our padding to a margin of 1m if we save and we refresh you can see that the div elements are respecting both the width and the height as well as the margin our inline elements our span elements do not respect the width and the height but they do ignore the margin on the top and the bottom this is the default behavior of both inline and block elements now if we target our div element and change the display of this element to be inline if we save and we refresh you can now see that the div elements which by default were block now behave as if they were inline you can change the display of any element by simply using CSS what I want to share with you now is what happens if we change the display to inline block if we change the display to inline block and we refresh our page you can see that now the div elements remain side by side but they do respect both the width and the height and all of the margin settings that we specified before I can do the same thing to my span element if we make a group selector and target span as well you'll see that the span elements now respect both width and height as well as margin all the way around as I mentioned the inline block property value is really a little bit of block and a little bit of inline it really gives you the best of both worlds so why would you want to use this well let me show you on our unordered list currently the unordered list is a block level element as are the list items I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the list style to none to remove the bullets I'm going to add a background color to the UL element and we'll just use our yellow color and finally I'm going to add some padding to the UL element now let's target the li elements which are also block level elements we're going to go ahead and we're going to change their background color to the green I'll change the text color to white and let's add some padding to these elements I'll add five pixels to the top and the bottom 10 pixels to the right and the left and for the margin I'm going to add zero for the top and the bottom and 10 pixels for the right and the left now if we save our page and we refresh you can see that the list items are taking up the available width that they can the entire space available what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the display of the list items we'll change our display to inline block when we do this and we refresh on the page you're going to see that this unordered list now looks a little bit more like a navigational bar we have the list items which are not links but if they were they are going to look more like buttons and they're going to appear side by side this is a very common technique where you will use an unordered list to create a list of navigational items and then you'll want to use CSS to change the default display so that the items don't stack vertically on top of each other but do appear horizontally next to each other you'll find lots of other uses for the display property value there is one final thing that I want to show you in regards to display for our discussion right now if we go back into the HTML you'll see that I have a span element with a class of nothing as well as a div element 
with a class of nothing. These are the fourth span and div elements on my page. Let's go into our CSS and what I'll do is I'll make a selector for the class of nothing and I'm going to tell this to have a display property value of none. If we refresh the page, you'll notice that the two nothing elements have now disappeared. The none property value will hide the item from view. The document is going to render as though the element did not exist in the document tree. Although the element is still present in the HTML, it will have no visual presence on the page at all. By using the display property of none, it doesn't just create an invisible box, it actually creates no box at all. It's as if it has removed it from the display. The display property is extremely powerful and it allows us to really dial in exactly how we want items to behave, even if their default behavior is not of that type. We'll be using this feature quite a bit as we build more sophisticated and complex web pages.